In so, we look back at the careers of interesting people from Derbyshire and East Staffordshire. And today, I'm delighted to welcome Buxton artist Sandra Orme into the studio. You've got a busy year ahead, haven't you? You've got exhibitions. So it's nice of you to come in and spend a bit of time with us this afternoon. Yeah, break from the easel, thank you. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. Uh, okay, you're, you're a painter, you specialise in pastels. I've just had a I look do. at some of your work and it's absolutely gorgeous. Thank um, you. you live in the Peak District now, but you didn't start life anywhere near there, did you? Not really, no. I was born in Lima. Actually, in Peru. In Peru. <laughs> which is bizarre. Slight how, journey, yeah. How did you end up being born there? Oh, my dad worked for Cave and Wilders, which is like an international company, and I'd have to be born over there. I spent the first five years of my life there, then Bahrain and Scotland and so on. So and you finally were... North Essex, like you do. As you do. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> any of your early life in Peru? I do. My first memories are of, of the, more the house and the gardens rather than Lima itself. But yeah, yes. that's sort of dual nationality as well, so it's quite sort of curious. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you go back then? Have you been there? No. No, one of my ambitions at one point, my husband's like, have fun with that. <laughs> I shall stay here. <laughs> oh, you should go. Yeah, I've been nice. It's, yeah, it's interesting. It's beautiful, and, and I yeah. think for me, when I, I mean, I've been to Peru. I was lucky enough to, to travel all around Peru. Um, it's so colourful. I think that's the mm. thing that gets me about Peru. The colours there. Yeah, no, it'd be really interesting to go back and sort of visit the sort of experience the culture more and the, the sort of city and the people and so on, that sort of thing. Yeah, and perhaps the landscape in the Andes, and that's been very interesting. Well, as a, as a painter, as well, a as a landscaper, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I like interesting weather and clouds. So <laughs> <laughs> that'll be good. <laughs> Just watch out for the uh, altitude. That's yeah, uh, it's it can hard make it work. a bit ill, different to Kinder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lima's not too bad, but um, mm. once you go to Cusco and up into the Inca Trail, then you're yeah, yeah. But apparently Lima's quite a fog bound, which is difficult in itself <laughs> to I work from. I don't remember it very, very warm. It was incredibly hot in Lima. Apparently it's warm and humid a lot, very moist and damp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, you started yeah. out so there. that was the beginning. Yes. <laughs> um, and then you come back to the UK and yes. you've travelled around a bit and then you ended up settling. But yes. uh, how did you sort of realise, or when did you realise, uh, even as a child, that you had a gift for... For, for painting and you wanted to be an artist? Well, apparently, um, age three, I said to my mum, I want to be an artist. She, she told me this. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. <laughs> she told me only recently. I was like, oh, really? Okay, so I don't think it's a question of getting into art. I've never, I've never out of it, really. I've always just done it. That's what I've just always done. And have you always... So I've got a degree in fine art and so on. Yeah, we've got, yeah. we'll go on to that in, mm. in a moment. But, um, I mean, when you were younger, when you, you was obviously, you know, you got... Your, I drew all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's just constant. Yeah. yeah. And were you drawing things in front of you, or were you drawing things you were thinking about, imagining? I think it's a mixture of both, definitely. I think it's important to work from life if you can as well, but it's definitely a combination of emotions and uh, expression as well. Okay. Then you went to university <laughs> and you studied yeah, art at university. Art college, yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, sometimes there will be people who think, mm, you know, what an art degree. What well, do you do especially that? now because you've got to pay a lot more for it. In fact, then it was free, really, for the fees, so and now it's a bit of a different thing. But um, my parents are very f fine about that and apply for me to follow my sort of dream. So that was really good. And what sort uh, of things did you learn when you... This was at Cambridge, I... Is that right? No, Canterbury. Oh, Canterbury, sorry, yeah. The Gamma scene. <laughs> close, close, <North>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and what sort of things do, do they teach you in, in that type of degree? Well, they really let you just uh, give you a studio space and let you find your own way through it. They sort of teach you about different materials and mediums. Not the technical side of things, but give you a chance to explore different types of studios and different ways of working. And just sort of teach you to try and not represent life, but trying to put yourself in touch with more conceptual stuff, perhaps, and think about what art represents and why, why you want to do it, really. Okay, did you do like art history and all that sort a of stuff? A bit of that, yeah, and art yeah. theory, that sort of thing, yes. And, yeah. and at the time at university, were you... Working in pastels, or no, I did a lot of charcoal. I did. I always drew a hell of a lot in charcoal, but just not a lot of um. A lot of it was very painterly college. There's a certain styles, different art colleges, and it was very painterly. So I kept trying to work in paint, but it didn't really suit me. I was I remember to draw a painterly. Is that a real word? Probably <laughs> in the art world, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Along with tinkering and that sort of thing. Yeah, Excellent, yeah. that's a great word. I <laughs> use that often, right? Tinker in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you finished your degree and uh, mm. you, you got your degree, I'm imagining, yeah. and then you decided to do what? Uh, become a, an art teacher, really. Because you need to earn <laughs> some money, really. Um, but I really enjoyed the teaching part of things and I really enjoyed sort of communicating how well I feel about art and techniques and so on. So I've got into te teaching art and spent about 12 years doing that. And that was a head of art in the East London. Okay, and what, interesting. what age were the children you were teaching? Uh, 11 to 16. All that age. Oh, exciting, yes. Yeah? Damn my royal, I was <laughs> royal box in the East End. It was really good. I bet it was. Yeah. I was terribly misbehaved in my, my art teacher, and I still remember her name, is Mrs. Ashdown. Mm. And do you know what we did once? This is such a thing to admit, like, admit on the radio. We locked her in <laughs> the cupboard. And to the next art teacher, you should yeah. have We locked her in the cupboard, <laughs> in the art cupboard, oh, no. for a whole lesson. <laughs> <laughs> didn't let her out for the whole lesson. Horrible. <laughs> 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 she's banging on the door. Oh, 
Um, yeah. Sorry, yeah, no. We well, I've had better days than that. <laughs> no, I quite enjoyed it. And I think it's that sort of school where art and drama and PE did very well. The kids really enjoyed it, but academically, perhaps they struggle with things like French and science. So we were lucky. We were the lucky teachers. I mean, when you're when you're thinking about what to, what to teach children of that age, is it very much let's get get stuck in hands on, let's, let's yeah. do some drawing, or is yeah, it very a, much it is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you try to do theory lessons, do anything of writing, and sort of listening. That was harder. So quick demonstration, we'll get on with it. I'll give you one to one help and lots of practical work. How do you mark um, art? Because art is a, a very personal thing. Um, what I may like, you may not like. How, as a teacher, do you do you that think is, that is interesting? Yeah, it's something people struggle with because it's so subjective, different tastes and stuff. But you, you're given quite clear criteria by the exam boards, and it's all about expressing, you know, different um, uh, depth of study, consistency of expression. It's all about. There's all different phases that go along with that, which help you to sort of judge things where they are. Okay, what we'll do, we'll, we'll stop for a little bit of music. This is Dusty Springfield, some of your work. Marking uh, artwork work. as a yes. teacher and a house. It's a nice, easy question. Yes. Yeah, so you have, um, we'll go back over that. So you have this <laughs> kind of, uh, you have to stick to a certain, certain yes, level? Yes, yeah, there's definitely an assessment criteria. It's quite a strict um, sort of level A to sort of A to G, I suppose it was at the time. Oh. Yes, yeah, so it's quite a strict criteria. And it sort of really looks at breadth and depth of skill and development of ideas and unique perspective and understanding of materials and control of medium and unique expression really so it goes through different levels yeah so you, you were teaching for 12 or so years and then you decided actually do you know what I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to be in a full-time artist that is <laughs> it's a big step yes it was but I've always drawn part-time you know every break that I had when I had the energy finally <laughs> recovered from the teaching term yeah. and my husband's from Matlark so we used to come up here and I used to do a lot of drawing and I really just wanted to keep going with that. And we managed to sort of leave London and I started to do it full time, which was brilliant. I wanted to give it a go and see how it went. Or as my husband calls it, retiring. Retiring. <laughs> yeah, he's not the one doing all the work, is he? <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do, uh, to do something you love full time like that. It's like mm. a musician, any, any art, any art sort of subject, to, to go full time with is very difficult. Mm. How do you work? Are you very much, I mean, you said there that in your breaks you're constantly scribbling, you're constantly drawing. Mm. Do you, as, the, as a full time artist, you say, right, Monday to Friday, nine to five, I'm going to sit down in front of the easel and do some painting, uh, I have a lunch break at twelve. But is it like that? Well, that was the original plan, but it doesn't work out that way. No, not when you work at home particularly, even though it's a sort of home studio it's very much sort of things get in the way you know organizing admin sorting out email self-promotional work doing pr not it just uh, always ups, ups the time you, you're lucky you get two days on the easel yeah <laughs> it's surprising and that's the, i suppose that's the point isn't it mm. that um just because you are drawing full-time that you've still got to you know no one's going to come and go oh lovely sandra have an exhibition yes, and we'll just you know art. you have to get the stuff out there and you know take it to be printed and photographed and yeah get things to famous get things to galleries deliver things you know run around doing lots of things like that as well how difficult was that for you to do or, or did, did your your history and teaching actually that, i think really helped. I used to work to live by lists, so I still live by lists, which surprised me. You know, I'm spinning loads of plates, basically. So that's what I do. <laughs> Spin loads of plates. Do you paint plates as well? No. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe that's something you can do. In the though. future, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about your style. I've had a look at some of your art. It's, mm. it's beautiful. Um, describe it to, to the listeners here. You know, we're on radio here. Try and describe it to us. Um, it varies from being in black and white and charcoal um, to being very colourful. It's a very kind of... It's quite representational, so it's sort of quite clear what things are. It's landscapes and skyscapes, particularly at the moment. And uh, the, the colour ones use a lot of layers of colour on uh, specialist pastel paper, and it, it tends to look at you know cloud formations and dramatic colours in the sky. And so living in Buxton is just ideal. <laughs> and I've got a house which we've got wonderful views right across towards sort of Mantor and Kinder from the bedroom and stuff. So I can see right across the whole valley and across sort of seven or eight miles. So I get huge st storms and interesting sunsets is great yeah the, co the colors on some of these sunsets the pinks are just beautiful aren't they really it's so nice yeah. to look at and so much mm. texture in them yeah which is it is really nice <laughs> thank so, you um when you decided to sort of make this your career and, mm. and you, you wanted to do this full time did you think uh i'm going to stick to what i like to do i'm going to stick to landscapes or were you tempted in a way to try and because uh, money's always a pressure for everybody. Were you tempted maybe to think, actually, I'm going to try and do something a little bit more commercial so that I can make money? I don't think I went commercial in terms of, um, not money I make, but also <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of um, actually what I choose for a technique and a sort of subject matter. But I did think about commercial things in terms of the size and the scale of what you do. 
and about how you can reproduce it so people can afford it across different purses, you know, so you do things like cards and you do prints, mm. but you also do things that are quite a bit uh, larger. But I used to like working large all the time, you know, I'd work happily four or five feet across, but you can't wow. do all your work that size because people can't fit it on their walls no, that's or true. afford it, you know, so yeah. I did think about commerciality in terms of, you know, having to bear in mind, you know, what, what can sell, what can put on display, what I can carry around <laughs> to shows. And when you're actually going around and, and you're showing your work, mm. then do you have the kind of little um, portfolio? Is that how it works? Um, no, I tend to do it digitally now, really, if I'm showing work. So I tend to use JPEGs and use the iPad and so on and do it that way. Which is what you did when you walked through the door, in I fact. Did, in fact, yes, there you go. <laughs> so you've got exhibitions coming up. Uh, I do, Tell yeah. us where we can see your work. Um, well, I've got three happening in May, which is really interesting planning on my part. Not on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I was listening to Grace and Perry do the Reese lectures, and he was saying about never say no to anything. You never know when your big break might come. That's you know, very, so very true. You know. So tell us where, where they are. So in May, uh, at the Roundhouse in Derby, we're doing a show called Art in the Round, and the group I belong to is called Peak District Artisans, and we are partners in that, and we're sort of showing in our own area. So we're doing a big show there, the third and fourth. Okay. Which would be very interesting, so just down the road from here. Lovely. And then, and then I've got a show at Contemporary Six, which is a gallery in Manchester. I'm doing like a four man show there on a, called Looking North. And it's about revealed landscapes of the Northwest with four of us sort of artists. So that'd be really interesting, something different there. That would get it finally, but. Uh, finally, not yeah. last but not least. I have a show from studios at the end of the month. <laughs> and then I've got a show in July after that in, uh, in Buxton. So it's, a, it's sort of full on for the next few months, which is great. When you are exhibiting, there's a lot more to it than just shoving some pictures on an easel or sticking mm. them on the wall, isn't there? Who, who does that planning? Is that something you do with your fellow artists? Yes, yeah. For example, I'm, I sort of coordinate the, uh, something called the Great Dome Art Fair in Buxton. I'm sort of the event manager and I sort of deal with all that sort of planning stands, layout and so on. I'm doing the same thing with Art in the Round, so I'm sort of organising where members go and organising sort of stand layouts and all that sort of things. A lot of planning and logistical stuff beforehand. It's a bit like project management, which I quite enjoy, though. I think it's my head of art hat, you know, I yeah. quite like sort of organizing things so when you put your paintings up what, what are you doing when, when you're you're displaying them how are you how are you looking thinking in your head we try and have a sort of two or three feature pieces to draw people in so some big knockout pieces ideally mm -hmm. <laughs> in a perfect world and then you have a sort of smaller pieces surrounding it and reproductions and so on sort of stepping down in terms of cost and scale and so on just try and show a range of what you do if you're trying to represent sort of a range of different things from sort of black and white through to charcoal through the sort of prints on canvas and so on and is each um, part of the exhibition, is it just one artist in each bit, or do you mix the artists? No, it's one artist in each bit, so everyone's got their own individual stands. And you sort of give them a space, and you, you bring them around a space system, whether it's easels, whether it's, you know, pole and panel screens, as they're called, and so on. So you do all that. When you think about art, um, there's, there's two schools of thought, thought isn't there? One, one is art is essential for, for us uh, as human beings, you know, with expression, be it, mm. be it music, uh, be it painting, be it drawing, be it, uh, com you know, um, being a comedian, for instance, <laughs> um, and there are other schools of thought that say, actually, you know, what's important at the moment in, in the, the times we're living in is, uh, you know, food and, and water and, and things like that, and we shouldn't be spending money on art. Do you think there's been less and less money being spent on the arts in this country? I think there is generally, yeah, not just government funding wise, also from people individually, I think as well. But I think that's just a sign of the times. But I think arts have an essential role, of, play, has a central role in what we do and how we feel about things. It'd be a, rich, a poorer world without it, you know, it is enriching in some way. How do you think we can change that? How, how do you think we can push things forward for, for artists like yourself? Well, I think it's making people realise that art is accessible to all and coming on to things like art and, around and taking part in things, watch, watching artists demonstrate and taking part in workshops and realising how fulfilling it is to be creative in your life as well as having you know, to nine to five sort of work as well. And what about schools now? I know you're not a teacher now, but mm. I imagine you may st you still go well, back to schools. and Yeah, and I still do work, a lot of workshops, yeah, okay. so it involves uh, students and teachers. And, and is there still enough time yeah. in the curriculum for, for art? It's very limited. Mm. And I would even ask head of art, it was only, even the GCSE students had like two hours a week, so it wasn't very much time. We used to do a lot of work, uh, extracurricular work, okay. a great deal of the time. So it's lots of pressure on the curriculum now, I think, for other things. and you know, for academic subjects. So I can understand that, but it is, is that you need a rounded life, and it's important to have everything as well. <laughs> don't, don't break the I'm trying not to knock things over and <laughs> bang my knee on the table, knock my bottle of water over. Well, you can tell you're expressing the mic. The <laughs> are going all Stop over. Stop answering. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so for the future for you, obviously you've got your exhibitions. That's absolutely fantastic. That's keeping you busy. Yeah. Do you have anything in mind, like some massive artistic goal for the future? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no pressure. No, it's um, just to keep on moving forward with things. Just to keep getting expanding on the galleries I've been working, and just keep 
pushing things forward and perhaps move from more sort of local and sort of regional out galleries. I mean, I mean galleries from Manchester to Chester and Worthing and a few in Brighton and so on, but it's just moving to keep going. <laughs> hands are knocking the mic again. <laughs> keep going um, and spread more nationally. Yeah, maybe really? uh, maybe get back to Peru. We well, never know. Internationally, there's a thought. Yeah, they get. Well, you see, you've got that link. As soon as you've got a link, you can you can move yeah. on, can't you? Take that <laughs> link and run with it. Yeah. Um, very much. Uh, good luck to you. Thank if people you. want to see any of your work, do you have a website? I do. It's sandraorm.co.uk. Or I'm on Facebook. It's Sandra Orm Past Originals. Brilliant. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks for coming in today. Thank and good you. Good luck to you with your exhibitions. Thank you.